threshold style artwork. Okay, you can use this for a great deal of things. What I personally like doing is converting it into a coloring book page for the kids. Uh, my kid loves color, so this would be a great way for her to color a ladybug. But now, I'm just going to show you all of them though, not just coloring book images, but how to threshold. So we have this right here, image adjustment threshold. And by default, um, you get this, okay, which is really kind of harsh. Um, sure, it is already in its own fashion, but it doesn't really represent the ladybug very well. So I'm going to show you this trick where I duplicate this a little bit and I drop it down to image adjustments black and white and what I want to do here is choose the red value to become a little hotter okay so I have a good indication between black and white and the greens I want most of these very very faint and sometimes you have to go back just to kind of see what you had so I have oranges, greens, and I have a little bit of brown in there. Okay, so now I can go back to image, adjustments, black and white. So reds, greens, and the orange and browns are going to exist here. And sometimes I'll just play around with these just a little bit just to see if I can knock some more color out some cases you don't want to knock out the black so there we go so now I'm starting to see these little details down here and that's kind of what I want to do if I look at tint, it adds a little bit of a tint to it based upon whatever color I put. I just want to show you that. But let's hit OK. And I'm going to duplicate this layer and then turn it into an invert. Okay. Okay, so it looks like this. Then I'm going to go to Color Dodge. And you're going to see this. Okay. So I'm going to go filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And as I pull this slider back, I'm starting to get this ladybug. And you can see all the little details in here of it. Just like that. Okay, so now if I wanted to turn this one into a threshold, I could. Some in some cases, I like it just the way it is because when they go to color it, they have um, some texture behind it. But if you wanted to do it all the way, copy merge, paste, and it pastes the image right here onto the topmost layer, where you can go image adjustments invert or threshold. And then you can start going like this, and you can start seeing the details pop in. Now the beauty of this is, if I go too dark, let's say I go too dark like this. Don't forget, there is so many different things you can do in Photoshop, because this one... I don't have to use it as a normal layer. I can use it as a multiply if I wanted to. And with the multiply, I get even more detail. And if I choose to go with a little bit less opacity, I get a half percent of both best of both worlds. So I'll, this might be too light. Um, the multiply or normal might be too dark. But um, I have the ability to opacity it down to get 100% perfect. So there we go. All right, so that's one way to threshold your artwork. Now, really, that's kind of only the best way to threshold your artwork because in most cases, uh, threshold just does a horrible job by default. 
But another way you can do it that's surely practical, but let's go back in here and open this. Another way you can do it is go image adjustments levels and I could level this out to be brighter just like that and then I can repeat the process or just go straight to um, threshold. But as you can see here, I don't have as much control as I did before when I turned all those images into a diffused layer or dodge layer. So, all right, so that is getting threshold artwork to look good and producing a coloring book page. Please move on to the next video.